All right, number one, guys. So it says here that we need to solve 14n greater than 11n plus 6. So with these kind of questions, guys, always treat it like a normal equation, like one with an equal sign. So essentially, we just go make n the subject. Now to do that, we're going to move all the n terms to one side and the number terms on the right. Well, the n terms, we've got 14n and 11n. So to move 11n across, we've got to subtract 11n. So 14n minus 11n is 3n. And we keep 6 on the right. And then finally, just make n the subject by dividing by 3. So then you're left with n greater than 6 over 3, which is n greater than 2. That's it. Done. Now for part b, they say that we've got a number line below, which shows a set of values of x for which x plus 3 is between minus 2 and 4. Okay, so for this kind of problem, we just essentially got to isolate x, yeah? So we've got to make x in the middle, guys, yeah? And to do that, we just got to get rid of that plus 3. And to get rid of plus 3, you just got to subtract 3 on both sides, yeah? Simple as that. And the form will look something like that. It will be something here, less than x, less than equal, and something else. So subtracting 3 on both sides, you should get minus 5 over here, and you should get 1 over here. And then putting it together, it will look a bit like that. And now to plot this on the number line, all you got to do is literally just draw a straight line here from minus 5 to 1. And it looks like that. And now this is the part we've got to be careful here. you got a less than and a less than equal sign. So what this means is that you're going to draw two circles. The one that's equal to is shaded in. That means you include it. And the one you don't shade in, you don't include it. So it'll be just less than. So it just misses five, minus 5, but 1 is included. And that's it, guys. That's one number 1 done. On the grid below, draw the graph of y equals 2x minus 3, which is a straight line, for values of x from minus 2 to 4. So all this really means is that you're going to plug an x coordinate from minus 2, find a y coordinate, and then plot another point from 4, find a y coordinate, and then just hook them up together by drawing a straight line. So my tip, guys, just pick two random x values from here. I just picked endpoints. So I, I would actually just say when x is minus 2, then you just replace the x coordinate here with minus 2. You're going to get y equals uh, 2 times minus 2 take away 3. And because it's a calculator, you can just drop this all in. And you should get a minus 7. So, so this actually means that the first coordinate is going to be minus 2 and minus 7. Now, you pick another point. Let's just say, I don't know, 4, yeah? So when x equals 4, you're going to get now y equals 2 times 4. So 2 times 4 take away 3. Once again, put in the same calculator, 2 times 4 is 8, 8 take away 3 is 5. So this indicates that the next coordinate is 4 and 5. And you're done, guys. You just plot this in, draw a straight line, and you're done. So we can say that minus 2 minus 7 is around here. You go across the x first, so minus 2 here, and then minus 7 down. So over here. And then for the next one, it's going to be, uh, what was it again? 4, 5. So it will be 4 across, so 4 here, and 5. And yeah, and then drawing a straight line together, it should look a bit like that. And that's it, guys. You're done. So Hannah's planning a day trip for 195 students. She asked a sample of 30 students where they want to go. Okay, so out of 195, she's only taken a small sample of 30, yeah? Now, each student chooses a single place. The table shows information about her results. Okay, so we got four different places, and these were the number of students out of the 30 that went to certain places. Now, they're interested in working out how many of the 195 students you think will want to go to the theme park. Now, the way to do this, we kind of have to look at the values of what they've done. So, apparently, our 30 people, it looks like 10 of them went. So, it sounds to me like 10 out of 30, or one-third of the students, will probably go to theme park. So, if you had 195, we can assume that one-third of them, or 10 out of 30, of 195. And off just means times, by the way, guys. If you work this out, you should get 65. And that's it. And for the second bit, it tells us to state any assumptions you made and explain how this may affect your answer. Okay, so when they're talking about assumptions here, they're talking about how we got this data, yeah, and what are the steps to it. Well, since we just collected data, we know for sure that it just, well, it should have been random, because that's how you get something accurate. You have to always just pick random data, and the sample size matters, you know, the bigger, the more accurate. So I just said this, I said, all right, so the number of students chosen is just totally random. This makes it quite fair. And why is this important? Well, this makes the results fair and unbiased. So you're actually going to get more accurate results. And if you're actually doing something for any surveys or stuff, this is kind of what we do. We always do fair results. And yeah, that's it for number three. So a container is in the shape of a cuboid. 
and this container is two thirds full of water. All right, we're talking about this one up here. Now, a cup holds 275 milliliters of water. What is the greatest number of cups that can be completely filled with water from the container? Right. So this question is basically asking how many times can you fit this cup with this quantity into this container, which is two thirds full. Now, to realize to figure out what is the actual like volume of this container. We should just multiply these three values because that's the volume of a cuboid. And if you do so, you're going to have like a volume of 30 times 6 times 19. And doing that together in your calculator, you should get 3,420. Okay? Yeah. And this is literally the same as 3,420 milliliters because centimeter cube and milliliters are actually the same units. Yeah? They're actually equivalent. Now, at this stage, okay, that's how much volume we have. And it tells us that the container is actually two thirds full. So let's find two thirds of that quantity. Yeah? Two thirds of that should give us exactly 2,280 milliliters. So that's how much you can actually fill up here. Yeah? Now you just want 275 milliliters of that. So let's go ahead and divide that. Yeah? So we can say, all right, we can fill exactly 2,280 over 275 in, in your calculator, guys. And you're going to get like a decimal answer of this. Now it tells us in the question that what is the greatest number of cups that can be completely filled? Well, the greatest number of cups is going to be exactly eight because you're going to fill up eight cups. And you're still going to get some kind of like decimal in another cup. So you can say you can fill up exactly 8. And that's it. Okay, question 5. So ABC is a right angle triangle. Okay. Calculate the length of AB and give your answer credit to two decimal places. Alright, so this is just a straight up soccer top problem, guys. Yeah. And when you want to find out a certain length and there's nothing to it, let's just give a name. So let's just call AB here X. Alright, keep it nice and simple. Now, because we're dealing with trigonometry, right angle triangles, always think so cat toa, yeah? And if you're not sure what each one is, so is basically the sine bit, cat is the cos bit, and t is the tan. Now, the o, h, and a represent opposites, so the opposite length. a is the adjacent, so the length next to the angle, and h is the hypotenuse. So to solve this problem, all you literally got to do is just label it nicely, yeah? So we ask ourselves, okay? What does the layer x and the value 17 represent here? Well, because the angle is 38, we say that opposite angle, the length of x is O, is opposite. And on the long diagonal side, this is always the hypotenuse. So we just write O and H. So that's it. Now, because we've got O and H, we just look at a soccer tour and we ask ourselves again, which one of these three terms have O and H? So O. Well, that's so. And so actually has that. Which I'm rewriting this one as a formula, it's literally going to be sine of the angle. So sine of the angle equals O, which is the opposite, over H, hypotenuse. So just like that. Now all we want to do is just fill this information up with our data above. So well, we can see that the angle here is 38, the opposite is X, and hypotenuse is 16. So it's going to look like this. Okay, so therefore it's that. And yeah, we're almost done guys. So just remember, we're trying to find the length of AB here, yeah? and we call it ABX. So we just got to rearrange and make x subject. Well, to find x, you just got to clear the fraction, yeah? So we've got times 16 across, so it look like that. And then just literally bust this in your calculator, and you're going to get an answer to 2dp equal to 9.85 centimeters. And we are done. All right, number six. So Sally used her calculator to work out the value of a number y. Now, the answer on the calculator display began like that. So if you had a calculator, it started like this, 8.3, and there's a bunch of numbers. Now, complete the error interval for y. So in this question, like you literally have to ask yourself, what could it have been, yeah? And the thing is of error interval, we're not looking at bounds, so immediately this could confuse quite a lot of us. Sometimes we think we're looking for upper or lower bounds. But in reality, we're just thinking what the number could have been. I mean, it could have been something like 8.3125, 8.3967. Basically, we know that the smallest possible value could have been is 8.30001. So we could say the lowest value must have been 8.3. Now, the highest possible value could have been, I'm guessing, is like 8.3999999. So the error interval for this one is that it has to be less than, well, 8.4. Because anything less than 8.4 will give us 8.3 and whatever number they choose. And that's really all they want. I just want to thank you guys for coming to this end of my channel and if you've enjoyed the content so far just go onto my channel page hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for more notifications and if you want you can do personalize or all.
and that way you won't miss any future maths or educational videos. Anyway guys, thank you for watching and see you next time. Ciao.